The first question asks if Smell's horseshoe is a map of the unit square into itself, and this is true. In general, Smell's horseshoe is actually defined on any square in the plane, or any region of a plane that can be continually deformed to the unit square. But regardless, this question is true. Question 2 asks if Smell's horseshoe maps some close points far apart and vice versa. So points that are close go far apart, and points that are far apart go close. And this is true. If you go back to the kneading bread analogy, which actually works very good, this is why if you're baking bread, if anyone's familiar with baking, you can stick all the chocolate chips in one place on the dough, and then knead the bread, and the chocolate chips will evenly spread across the entire dough, or any other ingredient or spice for that matter. It's not necessary to evenly space the spices all over the dough, because once you knead the bread, spices that were close together, or in some small cluster that you dumped on top of the dough, will spread apart evenly across the dough, and this is effectively what Smell's horseshoe does on the unit square. It can be thought of as taking the unit square and then kneading the unit square through three topological mappings, and the result of which is that some close points are far apart and some far apart points are then close. For question three, we're given the following picture of a small ball of initial conditions around theta equals pi and the undampened pendulum, with the stable and unstable manifolds drawn in. And we want to assume that the ball is very tightly clustered around theta equals pi. We want to know what these points will look like as time evolves. If we just think about this intuitively, we know that along the stable manifolds we'll have shrinking, so these points will shrink in, and along the unstable manifolds we'll have stretching. So what we should see is a long line of points along the unstable manifolds. For this reason, A cannot be correct, because you have points spreading along the stable manifold. This would only occur in backwards time. Part B looks the most probable. You have stretching along the unstable manifold, and you have no growth along the the stable manifold. The fact that you can't really see shrinking that well has more to do with the artist's ability, that is my ability, to use sketch pads than anything else. I think this one is the most probable, but let's take a look at the other ones. C would imply that they spread out in every direction equally. This is not the case. We know that we'll have shrinking along the stable manifold, so this cannot be the case. Part D can also not be the case, because you only have growth along the stable manifold which is exactly the opposite of what occurs. So part B, even though the shrinking is not really very good because of my artistic ability, we see the stretching along the unstable manifolds like we should see. So B is the answer to this question. Question four is a series of questions about a generalized horseshoe. Part A asks if horseshoes only turn up in the dynamics of the smale horseshoe map. And this is false. For example, horseshoes show up in the dynamics of the pendulum. This actually answers part C as well. Part B states that horseshoes are important because they play a role in the proof of chaos, and this is true as well. See the lecture for more details on this. Question 5 asks whether dissipation is a necessary condition for the existence of attractors, and this is true. 